Welcome to round two of the wax shootout at Dimitri's Garage. Today we're gonna be looking at all new waxes. We're gonna test them, we're gonna see which one's the best. What I really envision is three categories with easy to spray on kind of detail spray style waxes. The other category that I really see us using is a just traditional sealant category. So something like that Wolfgang, which won the last setup. So I think our third category is gonna wind up being those kind of spray on or spread on with a towel kind of uh, silicon-based liquid glass type of solutions. And then later on at a future time, we're gonna shoot out a bunch of coatings. So something cool that came out of the last video was that Turtle Wax reached out to me. They asked me if I'd be willing to try another product. I said I, I would be, and I was interested in that. So later on in the mail, I received this. So what I ended up getting from them was their repair and renew scratch fix uh, instead of what I imagine would be like a sealant or a wax. But we'll test this out as well, kind of at the end. They also gave me a few other little goodies. I haven't really completely dug through it yet. So guys, the first test we're gonna do today is gonna be this Car Guys uh, Hybrid Wax. I've never tried this stuff before, brand new unsealed bottle. They make some bold claims on this bottle. So if you take a look, these guys claim to be boosted with patented polymer technology, which creates the longest lasting spray sealant on the market. So we'll make sure we get all the best polymers going here. So the other instruction is just to basically go ahead and spray two foot by two foot and then wipe off. We're always gonna use a fresh side of a towel. This does not require an applicator, but where we do need an applicator, I'll always use a fresh one. So far, it's not really wanting to come off, but it's spreading around real well, which I'm assuming is their intent. That's how a lot of these instructions work. Uh, I don't know if I like that weird hazing it's doing. Now guys, this is our cheapest product. You may have noticed, 625. So the way I got all this pricing is I went and looked, what's the biggest tub or multi-pack I can buy on Amazon? And then what's that price per pint? There's still a bunch of hazing. I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe it goes away after some time. That's not a good look. Next is the Sonax Detail Spray. Now, to be perfectly honest, I've already tried this on my truck. That's why the bottle's not full, but it's my first time using it. You might be saying to yourself, well, Dimitri, what's up with that? It's a detail spray. Why are we testing it? Well, it's actually a wax too. I never knew that and I've never tried it before. When we use this stuff, we are gonna use a lot. This was one application of my truck. A car will use less, of course, maybe here but expect to buy a big bottle. But you know what, that is okay. If we look over here, guys, this Sonax Brilliant Shine Detailer comes in at 8.51 for a pint. At 8.51 for a pint, you do have to buy a big, big jug of it, which is something like $90. You basically just do that, and you start to kinda spread it around. And see, this doesn't haze and do all that weird stuff like that Car Guys was doing uh, that we just used a second ago. Yeah, see how easy that is? Like compared to that car, guys, I'm already done. So guys, up next is this product from Klasse. Now this is imported from Germany. I've never used this stuff before, but it's pretty old. People have used for boats and airplanes and all kinds of other things. We're gonna try it on a car. People are using it on cars. They're reporting good results. I'd love to test it for myself. Now this particular product is a high gloss sealant glaze, which is a little odd for me because glazes tend to not be sealants and sealants tend to not be glazes. So the instructions are really pretty basic. You're adding it to an applicator, you're spreading it around, it says very thin, and then you're buffing it off. It sounds super easy, let's get it done. I have no clue if the stuff is thick, thin, you know, what the deal is. So this applicator has been washed, I know it's nice and clean. We're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit. Ooh, wow, that is very thin. I'll kind of touch in a few areas. It's said very thin, I don't want to over apply. So it does say to allow to dry, it doesn't say for how long, so let's move on to the next one. The fourth product of the day is the Colonite 845. Now I've heard this is a very thick product and you really gotta shake it, warm it up, get it ready to go. And uh, this is a very old school product. Now this stuff has been around since, or the company at least, has been around since the 30s. Heard of people having to like put it in a pot of water to warm it up. So you guys might have noticed I haven't been doing a lot of videos lately. I actually just got a new job. So I've been really focused on getting to know my new team. It's been a busy time. That's why the videos slowed down a little. But I'm going to try to pick them back up. It's the weekend now and I have some time to myself. So let's try this colonite and see how it goes. So the instructions for the stuff. Exactly same as the Klasse. Wow, is that stuff waxy, guys. Ooh. I see why people are warming it up. Um, so guys, you might have seen how coagulated everything got inside the bottle. I had to pour a little bit of it off and get a new microfiber because I didn't think that waxy stuff was good to use. All right, but see, the weird thing is now it's all liquidy. So I just, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Um, 
What is going on? This is a really weird wax. Maybe that clumpy stuff was fine to use. I have, I have no idea. Um, it's definitely maybe a user scary product, not necessarily unfriendly if, if that's the case, because I've never seen something like that come out of a bottle of wax. So in the meantime, guys, I'm gonna use a clean side to get that Classa off. Oh, not liking that. It's only been on here a couple of minutes and uh, either I use too much or this stuff really doesn't like coming off. So this has been a little bit of my experience with some of these old school products. So sometimes they're just, maybe the user friendliness just wasn't really as valued. I mean, oh my God, I don't know how I'm gonna get this stuff off. That is a very user unfriendly wax. I've never had an experience like this. Okay, this looks pretty hazed now. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove it. I sincerely hope it is nothing like that class of product. Okay, it is actually removing pretty nicely. So one thing I've noticed is the colonite's not playing well with the masking tape, which is a ding I'm gonna give it. Because frankly, it, uh, ah, like see it's like streaking all the masking tape stuff. So while the 845 was easier to work with than the Klasa, I didn't like how much uh, solvent I could smell. It's some kind of petroleum distill, it's something, I, I, don't, I don't know. So up next is another Klasa product. This is their AIO, the all-in-one product. And the purpose of an AIO or all-in-one product is that it cleanses and it waxes and it kind of does everything in one, uh, more user-friendly. So let's see how user-friendly it is. I did not care for the sister product. We're gonna use a fresh new applicator. So the way this gets applied is that it'll be immediately removed. We're not waiting for hazing like with other products. Let's wipe it off just like the instructions say. Okay, that's easy. I like that. Oh, wow. Okay, class is redeeming itself in ease of application. So far, these two are my favorite to apply and take off. So another product I've heard a lot about, never tried before, is the 3D Poxy, uh, which is kind of a sealant that's supposed to be really temperature resistant, really high durability, and they recommend it for RVs, but people use it on cars and report really good stories and successes with it. They say it should last three to four months and you give it 15 minutes of cure time before wiping it off. So uh, it also says to use six to eight small drops. I've shaken this bottle up for a bit now. I can feel it's pretty thick stuff in there. So let's put it on this microfiber and see how it goes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little on the microfiber. It's so those six to eight pea-sized drops for a two by two area. Wow, that smells pretty good. All right, 15 minutes, let's do it. Okay, we're right at 15 minutes and it's time to remove this 3D epoxy. Oh wow, that comes off really well. So guys, we have two more products to test. One of them is this Guyon Cure. Uh, this stuff is kind of interesting. One reason that I find it so interesting is that they very clearly self-identify the properties instead of just telling you how latest and greatest their product is. So over here, they're talking about having four stars for its hydrophobic properties. They're saying that it has three stars for uh, both beating and self-cleaning. And it's giving themselves one star and for both hardness and durability. I'd love to see how my results compare to the stars. So here you go, guys. They give you their whole star rating right here. It's very interesting how transparent they're being. I'm just getting a clean side. And it's telling us to just kind of wipe it around for the whole panel, and that's it. it smells interesting. So I'm sort of just applying it. I mean, this is basically the same process as the other sprays, except I'm just putting it on the towel and then I'm buffing it. So it says apply till a shine. So it's kind of a detail spray actually, but a very expensive one at $41.39. It looks super glossy. It looks like that Wolfgang. So I'm pretty excited about this product, but I don't know how excited I am about the price. And that was the cheapest with a big bulk, whatever buy. Final product of the day is from Optimum Technologies, it's the OptiSeal. This is the most expensive by far. At almost $50, this is one of the most expensive sort of non-permanent type of products I've ever tried, but people rave about it and say it's really good. It did come with its own little microfiber, actually foamy thing, and the directions are basically spray the foamy, spread it around, and then kind of buff it off. All right, here we go.
It says, you know, do round circles, do back and forths. And you know, people like, it was so funny. Back in the day, if you didn't do round circles, you were basically called a monster. And now you do round circles and people say, no, go back and forth, you're making swirls. Swirls just come from you using the towel. Going back and forth with the shape of the car typically hides them better than going against it. But either way, you're gonna have to do paint correction. You're always gonna introduce swirls. So it doesn't ultimately really matter. And it's funny because here it just says kind of do both. So I think they're trying to placate like all the sides. So that was an easy cleanup and I don't think I used too much. Wow, I like this stuff. So let's recap. That was an interesting product. Really makes me think about things now. I still think the easiest to use is still the Sonex. I think I'm gonna follow that still with the 3D epoxy. That was very easy. After that, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be Klasse all-in-one. That was being very easy. And then I'd say it's really pretty much a tie between that Guyon and the OptiSeal. They were both very easy to use. And then I'm gonna say Colonite and the other original Klasse are the hardest and worst to use. Uh, with that Car Guy hybrid maybe coming ahead of them just by hair. So guys, we've tested everything, we've applied everything. Now we're ready to test slickness, we're ready to test gloss, we're ready to test uh, durability. So before we get into all of that, I did wanna mention that there will be results in the body and the text of the video. So you don't have to keep like a notepad or anything. I've got all that for you down there. So it's been 24 hours. I've gotten a haircut in the meantime and we're ready to review these waxes. So just like with the last video to measure gloss, I ended up using this gloss meter that I bought on Amazon. There is a link below if you'd like to purchase your own. So using this gloss unit, I hit every panel and I found the highest reading that was kind of stable and looked like a true good reading. And then I recorded that over a ton sample interval and I averaged it. So to give you an idea for how this unit works, you set it down and it starts taking measurements. You'll have your reading and you record it. So for now, we're gonna turn this thing off. So let's talk a little about the final gloss results. So the colonite, which is found right here, the colonite here, it was the glossiest, which is really interesting. I do like the way it looks, and I do think it's pretty glossy. Now, right behind that colonite is the Geon. That came in just a hair below it in terms of gloss. And personally, I think it looks fantastic. So this is where it starts to get interesting. The Opticoat came in in seventh place. It was very glossy. It looks really good. But the Control, which I think looks the worst, came in in sixth place right behind it. Now, the reason for that is like we've discussed in the last video, these waxes are not always making the surface shinier. So just to recap, seven points, six points respectively. The product from 3D, that is gonna get our fifth point spot. It was very glossy. It came in just below the control. Past it, the Sonax was the next. That one came in for four points. I think the Sonax still looks good. I don't feel very much slickness from it, however. For three points and two points respectively, the Klasa and the Car Guys came in in the next spots. So we've got three points here and two points here. Surprisingly though, our dullest product of the day is gonna be this Klasa AIO. This product here is just ridiculously dull as far as actual gloss. It doesn't mean it looks bad. I think it looks okay. It's just not as glossy as the others. So let's talk a little about slickness. This is a quality we measured last time too. Now, personally, the slickest for me using my hand, of course, not super scientific. I discussed this in the last video, but using my hand, the car guys right here, is by far the slickest. It is slicker than anything else out here. It's a super slick formula. I'm not completely sure what they're doing, but it's working really good. Now this 3D epoxy right here is actually the next slickest out of this particular batch of waxes. So we're gonna give it eight points. And I think it is a fairly protective and slick product based on just how nice it is. But I have to say out of this batch, Beyond these two, the rest are really not that slick. Furthermore, just to clarify, slick does not necessarily mean hydrophobic. There is a difference there. A product can be incredibly hydrophobic, but not feel slick at all to the touch. So for seven points, this colonite is relatively slick. For six points, this Klasa AIO comes right after it. Then it became really even harder to judge. So what I ended up picking was this Klasa in the number five point slot, and I gave four points to this Gion, it isn't really that slick, even though it looks very pretty. So disappointingly enough, the OptiSeal from Optimum came in with just three points. It really isn't very slick. And even worse, I could only give two points to the Sonax 
it's not slick at all. It almost feels like the control. And that's just very disappointing when the control is just only a little worse. Let's go outside, let's test this thing out with the washes and see how many times we have to wash this panel before all the waxes fail. So all of them are pretty hydrophobic from a quick glance. Let's try the car guys. That's not bad. How about the Sonax? Not bad either. And uh, let's try the Klasa. Okay, pretty good. How about this Colonite? Not bad. That's the other Klasa, the all-in-one. Let's try the 3D. Yeah, it's not bad either. Let's try that OptiSeal again. Yeah, that OptiSeal's not the best at being hydrophobic, which sucks because it's our most expensive. Let's try the control. Yeah, you see how the control is only a little worse than that OptiSeal? I mean, it's a good amount worse. Yeah, that's not, that's not good. I don't think that's gonna last very long. All right, we're gonna get the foam gun and we're gonna give this thing a blast. Now I'm gonna use this to wash everything. I'm gonna rinse this thing out. I like to give it one more blast with the soap. Whoa. All right, let's test them all. Car guys, still good. Sonax, still good. Klasa, still good. Colonite, still good. This Klasa is pretty good too. 3 Epoxy, still going strong. Gion is doing really great. Man, that uh, <laughs> OptiSeal is not the best. And the control. See, okay, maybe after the wash, the OptiSeal is actually doing better. Let's compare. Yeah, it is definitely still working compared to the control. And that's why we have the control there so we can compare. So what I'm gonna do now is keep washing and I'll interrupt the video to give an update where they start to fail. Guys, it's the third wash and we've got a result. Let me show you what it looks like. So first let's try the car guys. Still going strong. How about the Sonax? Beautiful. Let's try the Klasa. So that's starting to let go, that class of high gloss. Let's try the colonite. Beautiful. Let's try the class all in one. Whew, that's letting go too. Now let's try the 3D epoxy. So that one's gone by my standards. I mean, it's the same thing. All right, let's try the Gion. Beautiful. Let's try the OptiSeal. OptiSeal's still holding in, but it's not doing great. All right, I'm gonna do more passes and I'll let you guys know when the next one breaks. So it's round five, let's see what else failed. All right, let's start with the car, guys. That's starting to fade, but it's still working. How about the Sonax? Perfect. This Klasa, that's dead. Colonite, starting to fade, but still working pretty good. The Klasa AIO, that's also gone. Gion, beautiful, perfect still. Let's try the OptiSeal. I'm calling that gone too. It's the same as the control. So five rounds and we've got some losers. We've got both the Klasa products. We've got the OptiSeal and we already knew about the three epoxy. So kind of sad. Uh, but let's see how many more rounds before we have any more losers. So I just completed the seventh wash and we have another failure. I'm about to show it to you. Sorry about the lawnmower noise. It's the weekend and it's the suburbs. Everybody's mowing their lawns. Let's try the car guys first. So that to me is already pretty much failed. The 
Sonax is working really well. The Colonite is almost failed. We know that one's dead. That Geon is still doing really, really well. But yeah, let's look at that car, guys. So with the exception of like the little lip right there, which I might have just not washed that well, the main part of it's dead. Yeah, I'm going to say car guys failed within seven washes. I'm going to do a few more passes, and I'll let you guys know as soon as I have another result. All right, we're pass number nine, and we have another failure, and we're down to just two competitors. The Sonax, that one is really fading. Let's try out the Colonite. That's done. That's, that's doing absolutely nothing. And uh, we still had the Geon. Let's take a look at it. That is also fading hard. Here's my prediction. I think we're going to do one more wash, and we're going to find out that the Geon is going to fail. So guys, I just did the 10th wash, and it's kind of like we thought the Geon's dead. Let me show you, and then let's see how the Sonax looks. Sonax, that's still working. Pretty good, actually. And that Gian is done. If that was on my car, I'd be redoing it. Yeah, that's all over. And now I'm going to keep doing the Sonax until it wears off, and then I'll catch you guys for a recap. And we're going to try out that Turtle Wax product. Whew, it's so hot out here, I'm sweating. It's actually so hot, the camera equipment's complaining at me. Got to move this thing back indoors. All right, guys, we're all done. We got our results. And I'll just tell you right away, the Sonax finally failed at 14 tries. That's really, really good for something that's so cheap. I wish it was a little slicker, but I'll kind of get into what I think about each one of these. Let's recap. Overall, on visual appeal, which I think what I'm going to do with the visual category is break it out separately in the website that I link in the body of the video. Like I said, there will be table and data for you. You don't have to track all this. I think I'm gonna break out two categories sort of with the visual rating and without it. And the visual rating is just my opinion. It's what I think looks best. And I think the reason to break it out is so that if you wanna just look at the totals, and later when we do the playoff totals, it'll take it out of the equation, and that way we'll have both ways that we can measure it. If your tastes are similar to mine, maybe you'll like it. So anyhow, let's let's talk about what I found the most visually appealing. I thought the prettiest was the Gion by far. It had that very deep gloss that you really wanna see uh, where it's almost like wet paint. It just, it looked really good. And I get why people like that look, and it is an expensive product. So that is one of our most expensive you know, it looked a lot like that Wolfgang, and I'd love to see him next to each other. Bopta Seal, I thought, looked really good, too. So I was kind of impressed with that one. And then the other impressive one was the Klasa AIO. I thought it did quite well. And the Colonite 845, that one also did pretty darn well. Everything else was kind of second tier at that point. You can check the table out on the website or just get a good look right now. Now, we've already talked about slickness, we've talked about gloss, and we've just covered the amount of washes. So let's talk about our totals and our winners, and I'll give you a little rundown of what I think about each product. So let's start with the winners. The Gion came in in number one spot. It got 35 points, which I thought it did very, very well. It's just a very expensive product, and I'm afraid that a bottle will not you know, go farther than a couple of washes. So although the durability was still very good at 10 washes, I overall thought the product was very good, and, and we'll definitely test it against other products in the future. But man, I'm a little skeptical of paying that much for something that lasts so little compared to something like the Wolfgang. In the number two spot, really surprised me was the Colonite 845. You know, I was ready to laugh at it and kind of, you know, talk about what it's like some old school crap. But honestly, I get why people use it. I didn't really care for what it did with my masking tape. It um, really destroyed it. And visually, it wasn't the best. It was kind of at the bottom of the front runners. But man, overall, it's, it was just very solid, nice and glossy and you know durable may not be my favorite product but man it, the results speak for themselves so in the number three spot we've got this 3d epoxy right here and uh it is pretty impressive except for the durability i just you know i think i'd have a hard time using it just because of that that's an important factor for me but it did still score very well especially because of how slick it was and how easy it was to apply so going down to number four was sonax now sonax was our really cheap detail spray it was our second cheapest and it really made it all the way to the end on the durability testing 
14 washes, incredible. And overall, I think we can agree that the Sonex has some negatives. I'm very impressed with that Sonex, especially given how cheap it is. It really might become my new detail spray. I do kind of wonder if it will reduce the slickness of other products that I use, and maybe it's something that's better to put under instead of over as a topper. We might just have to do a lot of tests like that and uh, kind of see which way it goes. For number five, we've got this OptiSeal, and the OptiSeal was a little disappointing for me. You know, I was really expecting more durability, you know, and honestly, the slickness really wasn't there. It was barely better than the control. You know, we were really being pretty generous. There was only just one other thing worse than it, uh, which was unfortunately that Sonax. The Sonax really had no slickness. I really can't see dust kind of flying off of it. I can see it being a total dust magnet. And maybe there's a way I could simulate that. If you guys can think of a good way to do it, and I've thought of things like powdered sugar, but I, I don't know. If you have a good way to simulate dust uh, that doesn't involve making a gigantic mess, let me know. At number six, we had the Klasa AIO. And that product uh, surprised me a little bit because initially I was very concerned about how well it was going to work given the other Klasa product that we were testing, the Seal and Glaze. That one was really disappointing me with the way it was applied, and I just, just really didn't care for it. Now, the AIO kind of salvaged things. If we take a look, it's got some really good qualities with the gloss being its really only big negative. It really isn't a very nice, uh, shiny surface, but the cool thing is it still visually looked good. So this is something that people need to understand. The gloss meter is not necessarily a determining factor for how good something looks. I thought that still looked very good. It just wasn't that glossy. Now, in the seventh spot, we got this Car Guy product, the Hybrid Wax. Man, I just really didn't care about this thing overall. If you like it, spray it. You know, overall, it's not a terrible product. It was very, very slick, which I did enjoy. The gloss was pretty mediocre. The durability was just okay. They, they made some really bold claims about how this is the most durable product on the market. I don't think that number justifies that at seven washes, given that Sonex at 14. So let's say, no, not the most durable. Really not bad at all with 24 points, given how ridiculously cheap it is. Now, moving down to this Klasa Glaze, whatever, sealant product, it was really just a total fail for me. I, I just really don't care for that at all. It came in in the eighth place, uh, just 19 points. I mean, it failed on everything except basically durability. Uh, there's just nothing redeeming for it. And guys, it was just, I'm sorry, I'm not a total idiot to using waxes. And that was only a few minutes of it drying on the panel. And that was just a nightmare to remove. Now, some people told me who I talked to who have used this product, hey, you're just supposed to get, you know, that Sonax or something else you know, another detail spray, throw it on there and then take it off. But the problem is those detail sprays, they're going to contaminate the test. If they have their own special detail spray I'm supposed to use, that's fine. Tell me what it is. Maybe we'll do another test. But right now, I'm just going to say that's no bueno. I shouldn't have to spray a detail spray to take wax off. Even if the amount I used was way too much, then it's still a very user-unfriendly product. So guys, keep in mind, I'm not running a lab here. These are my own tests at home. So take them with a grain of salt. If you're using the product, you love it. If you think it's the best thing in the world, please keep using it. I'm not really out here trying to diss your product. This is actually the beauty of having so many different products is that you have all this choice. I understand there's ways to layer and like combine products and we'll be doing some of that testing in the future. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is we're gonna move back in the garage where we're gonna test the scratch fix from Turtle Wax. And also keep in mind, that is the only product that I've received for free. Uh, all this other stuff comes out of my own wallet. This is all purchased by me. That's the only sponsored product I got. With that in mind, guys, if you use the Amazon links, it definitely helps me out. I use all of that money, which they give me in the form of gift cards, to buy more of the stuff to test on Amazon. So if you want me to keep doing more tests and if these are helpful to you, please do use that Amazon link. Even if you're buying something totally different, it's not going to cost you anything extra. And the good thing for me is I'll get to buy more of these products, give you more tests. And if you're not an Amazon shopper, you can still help me out by sharing a link to this video, liking it, or leaving me a nice comment. All that stuff really goes a long way and it helps me make these videos. Okay guys, so as promised, we're gonna be testing this turtle wax and we're gonna see just how well that does. I'm kind of interested. It's supposed to be a really easy solution based on reading this. You know, they're talking about that it'll remove years of damage in just one use. And apparently the instructions are kind of, you could do it by hand. So here's what I'm thinking for the test. I'm gonna use the Scotch-Brite pad and I'm gonna create kind of an area for the test that we can break up into three parts using some masking tape. So guys, here's the area that I'm thinking about making our scratches in. I would never measure anything here. This is normally where the label goes and I'm thinking just right here. It feels super wrong to do that. 
it's like I spend my whole time removing scratches. So I think you guys should be able to see the scratches pretty well right there. There we go. We'll just cover that right up so we're not messing with it. So with that masking tape in place, we should get really nice contrast. First thing we're doing is starting by hand with one of these 30 seconds a piece. Let's give it a shot. All right, and we're watching for the 30 second mark. That is some, that's some seriously aggressive stuff. It feels really gritty in my hand. It really might be working. Let's take our cloth. It made a big difference. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep using it 30 seconds at a time. I'll record how many passes I do. I'm thinking somebody doing it by hand is probably not gonna wanna invest hours and hours especially if they have a large panel to cover. All right, guys, I wound up doing five total passes, including the one you saw. So taking a look, we could see the improvement is huge. And I'll give you guys another angle here in a second. With this improvement, we can tell several things about this product. One, it does work. It is pretty aggressive, and it does make a big improvement to the paint underneath. Now, the other thing we've learned is that, no, you're not going to get really deep scratches out by hand. I mean, unless you're just going to devote days to this project. People still spend a lot of time even just with a machine. And if you try to do that by hand, I just couldn't even imagine it. So let's pull the tape up and compare it. So if we wipe that edge clean, we could see a pretty nifty gradient there where it starts to disappear. So this right here is where the hand application took place, and this is where the tape was. There's a huge, huge difference here. It really does work, but it is a lot of effort though, but you can do it if you really want to. All right, let's tape up the other untouched area. I'm trying to make a nicer line on it than last time. So what I'm gonna do now is use this bad boy to clean up the two spots that were there, the one that was done by hand and the one that is gonna be done by this thing. Essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna time 30 second intervals and see how fast those marks disappear. So guys, that was the 30 second pass. Let's wipe it up and see what it did. So if you're really taking a look, only the really deep marks are still there. So what do you guys say, let's do one more pass? I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it right here. Let's wipe that up. Not bad at all. Two passes really get it pretty close. So what's cool with doing this is look at how big this area is. Even if this takes us four or five passes to get 100% completion, look at the big area versus the little area by hand. Hopefully you guys can see in the camera, but super smooth. I guess some of those scratches I made were pretty damn deep. I got a little aggressive. Also, I'm going at a super low RPM, the bottle suggesting going slow, and the compound is aggressive if it really is 1,000 grit. Whoa, that's looking pretty good. Ignore the smudges I'm making, but... It's really getting pretty close to perfect there. That is nearly flawless. You know, we had to do a few passes to achieve it, but it's really good. I think one more pass, we're gonna call it a day. I don't wanna get more aggressive than that, but it is like really almost there. Let's switch to the Atom system. We'll do kind of the same amount of passes. If their heavy polish can't get to the same point in the same amount of steps, then we already know it is lost to the turtle wax. All right, guys, so here's the big reveal. That gradient right there is just absolutely massive between the ruin section and the corrected with turtle. That's some pretty gnarly scratching right here. Ignore this, this is just from the label tape. I haven't used alcohol to put, peel it off yet. These Adams polishes are what I've used for years for correcting paint. They've gone through some formula changes. I think the colors got realigned at one point. And today we're gonna use the heaviest one to do the initial correction to see how many steps that takes. It took the turtle repair and renew six passes to get to where it is right now. 
if the heavy correcting can get there under that time at 30 second intervals at the same RPM, then we can say that these are gonna be better at cutting and maybe the system is overall faster. Now we'll compare it. So I'll go ahead and mask that other side off again and then we'll use these guys. All right, I'm gonna put it literally right on the lip. All right, so we're starting with this stuff, the heavy correcting compound. This stuff has always served me pretty well. What I'm gonna do now is keep doing 30 second passes until it looks about the same to me. Hopefully we can get less than six in just the heavy step, which I think is a fair test against the turtle repair and renew. It doesn't really say on here what grid it is, but it feels, especially in my fingers, like it's probably similar. I don't think there's any big difference between the Atoms and the Turtle. I think in six passes, they both did just as well. So guys, final thoughts. Would I use this product or would I continue using this product? Honestly, I just compared the price. This is almost $20. The Atoms one is 18, 80, whatever. It's, it's almost 19 bucks. This is 6.99 right now on the internet. So being that it worked just as good as this, as soon as I run out of this stuff, I'm just switching to the, the Turtle Wax. I, and I'm kind of curious if they have a whole three step, so I'm gonna start researching that. I'd like to try them out. So I'll leave you guys with that. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up, leave me a nice comment. And of course, I'd love it if you subscribed. Check out the Amazon links and the link to the matrix from the tests earlier. For now, I've gotta go. I've got work tomorrow in the morning, but I'm gonna catch you guys again really soon.